بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد يعفه منشن رحمه الله تعالى المثال الخامس عشر The 15th example The 15th example Clarifying the beauties of the Islamic legislation Clarifying the beauties of the religion of Al-Islam So he mentioned Rahimahullah Al-Usul Al-Usul wal Qawaid Al-Lati ja'alaha al-Shari'u Ususan Al-Lati ja'alaha al-Shari'u Ususan Li fasli al-Khusumat Wahal al-Mushkilat وترجيه أحد المتداعيين على الآخر. The fifteenth example is the the principles and the fundamentals that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He has placed and made them to be fundamentals and foundations with regards to uh, solving disputes and uh, problems between parties and groups and to be able to determine which party is more uh, probable and likely to be correct and to deserve the right over the other one. Principles that have been established in the religion with regards to this affair, solving uh, disputes between individuals and between parties and the likes and the principles that have been set and fundamental foundations that have been laid down in the legislation uh, and prescribed in the religion of Al-Islam with regards to this affair. Whenever there are individuals, one of them is claiming against another a right, and one of them, he will deny that, or he will admit that, and the likes like this, how to determine these affairs, and how to establish these affairs, and how to uh, decide uh, these disputes, and to finish them, and to solve these problems. So he says, Rahimahullah, فَإِنَّهَا أُصُولٌ مَبْنِيَةٌ عَلَى الْعَدْلِ وَالْبُرْحَانِ وَالْطِرَادِ وَمُوَافَقَةِ وَمُوَافَقَةِ الْفِطَرِ he said, because uh, verily these fundamentals, they are principles that are based upon justice and clear proof and evidence and with uh, continual and well-known custom of the people, the, the orderly and well-known customs of the people. And they are in accordance likewise with uh, natural disposition. فَإِنَّهُ جَعَلَ بَيِّنَ فَإِنَّهُ جَعَلَ الْبَيِّنَ عَلَى كُلِّ مَنْ إِدَّعَ شَيْئًا وَحَقًا مِنَ الْحُقُوكُ and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the ruling that everyone and he has made the obligation of bringing a proof of bringing in al bayina what is intended here what is intended here is a proof and evidence that everyone who claims a right everyone he, who claims something or claims a right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the burden of bringing the proof upon that person the one who makes a claim to something or he makes a claim to a specific right, financial right, or, or a legal right, and the likes like this, the one who makes that claim, then uh, Allah has placed upon him the burden of bringing the proof for that. And the obligation of him bringing the proof for that which he claims. He said, فَإِذَا أَتَى بِالْبَيِّنَ أَلَّتِي تُرَجِّحُ جَانِبَهُ وَتُقَوِّهِ ثَبَتَ لَهُ الْحَقِّ أَلَّذِي إِدَّأَ بِهِ so if that person, the claimant, the one who claims something or claims a specific right and the likes like this, if he brings a proof and an evidence for that, for that which he's claiming, that which will clarify and be a means to show the probability that he is most likely correct and that what he is claiming is true. And he will bring up, he will bring up proof and an evidence to strengthen the, his claim, to strengthen his claim, then the right will be established for that which he claims then the right will be established for that which he claims. If he claims a right to something, then he will be uh, ordered to bring a proof and evidence to establish that, that claim. If he brings the proof that is reliable and, and that is acceptable, then his right will be given. And, and his right will, will, will be given to him and he will obtain that and he will deserve that. And he, because it's based upon evidence and proof. And he's mentioning, uh, rahimahullah, that these proofs and evidences, they are in accordance to justice and also clear, solid proof and evidence, and also that which is in the, in the normal customs of the people and that, that is well known in the culture and customs uh, of the society. So then he says, وَمَتَى لَمْ يَأْتِي إِلَّا بِمُجَرَّدِ الدَّعْوَى وَمَتَى لَمْ يَأْتِي إِلَّا بِمُجَرَّدِ الدَّعْوَى حُلِّفَ الْمُدَّعَ عَلَيْهِ عَلَى نَفْيِ الدَّعْوَى وَلَمْ يَتَّوَجَّهَ لِلْمُدَّعِ عَلَيْهِ حَقٌّ 
lil mudda'a alayhi haqqun uh, he said rahimahullah uh, that uh, and whenever the claimant he does not bring any proof he does not bring any proof and the only thing he has is a claim he has nothing but a claim then the one who was being claimed against he will be he will be made to swear and take an oath before allah and to deny that claim to deny that claim somebody claimed the right for something against someone and uh, that person didn't bring a proof to clarify that the one he's claiming against will be made to swear and take an oath before allah that what he's saying is not correct that what he's saying is not correct to deny that claim he'll take an oath before allah to deny that claim and then uh, the one ولم يتوجه للمدعى عليه حق then at this time والله وارم لم ولم يتوجه للمدعي ها حق صح كانوا what do you have but the siyak is uh huh and we're gonna translate it what is it clearly and it seems there's a mistake in the print so at this time the no right will go to the person who claims and that's what is intended the person who is making the claim he makes a claim for example, somebody claimed, this is my phone. And then we tell him, bring the proof. He said, he don't have no proof. He don't have no proof. And, and he says, this is my phone. He comes, somebody comes in and says, this is my phone. They said, no, that's my phone. And he, he don't have no proof. He don't have no proof. He said, bring a proof, it's your phone. He don't have a proof. So then I'll, he said, he tell me, that's not my phone. I'll say, well, it's my phone. And if he don't bring no proof, then he gets no right. He gets no right like this. This is the, this is the intent. So the one who, ha who has a claim, he's required to bring a proof for what he claims. If he brings a, a proof that clarifies he's truthful, then, he get, then the right will be his. If he does not bring a proof to clarify he's truthful, the one he claims against, the one who is being claimed against, he will be made to swear before Allah Azza wa Jal, denying his claim. And if he does that, then he will get no right, the one who is claiming. He has no proof, and the man he's claiming against had swore against Allah, against him, denying his claim. So therefore, this will solve the dispute in this manner like this. And after this, the, the, this issue here is finished. Either he's going to, the one who comes claiming something, either he brings a proof, or if he doesn't bring a proof, the one the claim is against, he'll be made to swear that what he's claiming is wrong. And this matter is, just, is finished. That, that issue is done. We understand that? If he brings the proof, it's clear, alhamdulillah. He brings the proof, it's clear, alhamdulillah. Then it, it, it's, it's his proof. He brings a clear evidence claiming that, that which he claims is correct. He brings a receipt for the item, for example. Or he brings witnesses or he has other circumstantial, circumstantial evidence and the likes like this that can clarify that it's his. Then he, that, that proof and evidence will be accepted and he will have his right given to him. If he has no proof, only a claim with his tongue only. And he has no way to bring any proof and establish any proof. The only thing left now is to make the one they claim is against to swear by Allah he's not true. To swear by Allah that what he's claiming is not correct. And if he does that, it's, it's solved and finished. It's solved and finished. And tell the man he brings evidence. We understand that. This is a beautiful way. This is a beautiful, oh, this is a beautiful uh, way. It has uh, been uh, reported authentically uh, on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the hadith of Ibn Abbas and uh, the foundation of this narration is in uh, Bukhari and Muslim and uh, also in the Kutub al-Sitta all of them except for an nasai or rather al-Kutub al al-Sabaa <laughs> which one is that? Allah, along with Ahmed the six along with Ahmed it's in all of them except for an nasai this, this narration and the wording that we have now is the one from Al-Bayhaqi it's the one that's mentioned in the, the 33rd hadith of the 40 hadith, hadith of Anawi, the famous narration the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said لَوْ يُعْطَى النَّاسِ بِدَعْوَاهُمْ لَدَّعَى رِجَالٌ أَمْوَانَ قَوْمٍ وَدِمَاءَهُمْ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if the people were to be given based upon their claims then men would claim the wealth and the blood of others meaning unrightfully if it's just based upon claim if it was just based, if people, if people w were given the, the, what they claim based upon claims with no proof, then the individuals, they would come and claim the wealth of others unlawfully, and likewise their blood. And likewise their blood unlawfully. Unlawfully. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَلَكِنْ لَكِنْ لَبَيِّنَةُ عَلَى الْمُدَّعِي وَالْيَمِينُ عَلَى مَنْ أَنْكَرَهُ But rather the proof is upon the claimant. The proof is upon the claimant. And uh, the obligation to swear and take an oath by Allah is for the one who denies that. It's for the one who denies that. So this is the case here. 
And this is re- referring to this foundation. This is with regards to uh, solving disputes and, and solving uh, this quarreling with regards to financial affairs and with regards to rights and other things and the likes like this. So uh, the, the Shaykh, he says, uh, and the legislator, and referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has made these proofs and evidences to in accordance with the levels of the affairs. And he has made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likewise, he has made the, the, the circumstantial evidences. As proofs, likewise, the the circumstantial evidences and the, condi- the condition and circumstances of the people and the situation to also be used as evidence, to also be used as evidence, and likewise the well-known customs, the the the, the customs and the standard or the norm of the society. All of these are from the proofs and evidences that can be used in these affairs. All of these are from the proofs and evidences that could be used in these affairs. For example, somebody ca- again come and claim this is their phone. He tried to claim this is their phone. We tell him to bring a proof. If he can bring, bring a proof, like for example, when it's known in, in society that uh, you, when you buy the likes of these items, you get a receipt. So maybe he'll bring, he'll bring a receipt that has a, that has a serial number on it. And the likes like this, or maybe he registered. It's registered with the serial number. So we we'll check his receipt and his registration in his name and check the serial number on the, on the phone. Or even things with, with regards to the custom of the society. Normally, somebody who has a phone, he knows his own phone number. We'll be like, if this is your phone, then, then what's the phone number? If this is your phone, then what's the phone number? So he said, uh, and then they asked me, what's the, it's not his phone, it's my phone. Here's the phone number, call it. <laughs> and it will ring. This is, this is a, this is a qareena, this is, a, this is circumstantial evidence clarifying. Then if we go in there, likewise, look, look, look at, the, look at the, the names on the, uh, on the context. He's got my mother on there, he's got my father on there, and my brother's on there in Oklahoma, like this. Where, where are your family members at on there, if it's yours? What's the password? If it's, if it's your phone, what's the password? Unlock it. He doesn't know it. Why well, I know it. So these are all circumstantial evidences claiming that he, his claim is wrong and not right. So the legislation considers these affairs in establishing the bayina. This is what he's mentioning. This is what he's mentioning. I remember now uh, a story of one of the one of the mashaykh. He had a, he had a secretary. He had a secretary. I forget his name now. Uh, he he had a secretary, uh, and this particular scholar he was wealthy. He was wealthy and he had left something behind, any from wealth and the likes like this. And uh, his secretary had spent a long time mastering his signature. Mastering his signature to, to where he could write the signature of the sheikh exactly li- li- like this. So then there was an issue with these checks, some checks that were being cashed and the likes like that. And then uh, they wanted to find out uh, any how this is going down. There was a crime going on with this man and he had passed away. Rahimahullah, and there's checks being cashed with a signature on there. And they couldn't figure out how it's going, or how it happened, or, 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 or is it, did the Shaykh really write this check? And then, and then the people, the family, they tried to deny it, but it's the, the, the signature of the name is, is, of the Shaykh is on the check. And the likes like this. So, so there was an issue in court. And then the, the, the judge, he was very wise. And he, he pondered over this affair for a minute. Many people, they, they knew, they knew that it was not right. But when they look at it, it's the signature, it's the signature of the Shaykh. The, you know, the, the people, the, the, the family members, they know that there's something wrong. That this is not right, this is not correct. But they have no proof. And then when they look at it, and when they're going to go to the evidence, the signature is right there. So the issue got brought to the judge, and the judge was very wise. And he started looking at it, and pondering over it, and thinking about it. And then he ruled against the person who claimed that, that it was for him, the check was for him. And he ruled, he ruled against that person. And whenever they asked him how he knew, until that person confessed, how did he know? He said, because it said Shaykh so and so and so and so. And the Shaykh, he would never call himself Shaykh or sign his name as, as Shaykh. Like this. The point <laughs> that when we, when we hear the likes of this narration is to clarify the, the humbleness of the scholars. The humbleness of the scholars. That, that they're not known for every writing before their name Shaykh. Or, or, or writing any of these great alam uh, and any the, the great scholar or the great Shaykh and the likes like this. They, they're humble. They don't put these titles for themselves, and they don't, they don't prefer that. But the point, the point is now here is that this particular judge was able to verify by the qara'in, by the circumstantial evidences, that the shaykh, he didn't write that because he would never sign his own check and call himself shaykh, like this. So now he realized that it was fraud. 
and then he ruled against the person and the likes like this and he was able to verify that until the individual confessed. Until the individual confessed. So these affairs are considered in the religion. So this is from the beautiful affairs of Al-Islam. From the beautiful affairs of Al-Islam is that anybody who claims something, he has to bring a proof for that. Anybody who claims something, he has to bring, any, he claims a right or, or anything, he has to bring a proof for that. And if he claims against something, somebody, and he, and he doesn't bring the proof, that person will be made to swear and take an oath before Allah. What he's claiming is wrong. And if he takes that oath, then the situation is, is, fo- is solved and is finished. If he doesn't take that, that, the oath, he'll, uh, now he will, be, he will be taken to court now for uh, refusing to testify. And he, so he will have another issue. And he is the one who refused to testify. They, it's, it's, it, he claims that he doesn't have a proof. Swear. And he said, no, I'm not going to swear. Now he'll be taken into another situation for denying to testify and for, 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 for refusing to testify and the likes like this. So if he's truthful, then he will swear that, that the man is wrong and the likes like this. And, in the, and, the, and the dispute will be handled in this affair. Shaykh Huna Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, he mentioned a beautiful benefit yani, with regards to this issue. And he, well, because what is apparent from the narration is referring to the worldly affairs. Somebody who claims wealth or property uh, or, or finances or some uh, worldly right and the likes like this, this is how you deal with it. Al-bayina ala al-mudai. Al-bayina tu ala al-mudai. Wa liyaminu ala man ankara. But he mentioned a beautiful benefit. Likewise, hafidhuhullahu ta'ala, and this is also in the affairs of the hereafter. This is also in the affairs of the hereafter. The one who claims something, he has to bring a proof. Many of the one who claims he loves Allah Azza wa Jal, and he loves the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It's incumbent upon him And required for him To bring the proof It's incumbent upon him Likewise And required for him To bring the proof If you love Allah Then follow me This is why Ibn Kathir uh, In the tafsir of this verse He said That everyone who claims That he loves Allah But he's not on the prophetic way And he's not following The deen of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He's a liar at the same time until he follows the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his deen precisely in all of his statements and all of his actions. In all of his statements and all of his actions. So yani, even in the affairs of the hereafter, likewise the claim, the one who claims that he has to bring the proof. The proof for somebody sincerely, sincerely loving Allah and sincere, sincerely loving the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he will follow the messenger and he will prefer that way. And he will obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the point here is that this is from the beauty of Islam. Solving disputes amongst the people. They are cut like this. And they are decided in this, in this manner. So the shaykh, he says, فَالْبَيِّنَاتُ فَالْبَيِّنَاتُ إِسْمٌ لِكُلِّ مَا يُبَيِّنُ الْحَقَّ وَيَدُلُّ عَلَيْهِ So therefore, and he based upon this, the bayina, and he referred to in that narration, the proof and evidence for somebody is a, is a term or a word that is used to uh, express or uh, indicate anything that clarifies the truth and the right that would indicate this person he has a right. And he from the circumstances uh, or from the customs and cultures and the normal way of society or from a clear evidence and proof or from witnesses and the likes like this, this is all considered a bayina. This is all considered a bayina. It's not, it's not restric- restricted to one aspect. Rather, there are a number of aspects that a person could bring a proof to establish, uh, to, to establish his, his point and his, pr- and his evidence and to establish his right. And to establish his right. So he said, Rahimahullah, wa ja'ada inda rishtibahi wa tasawi, wa ja'ada inda rishtibahi wa tasawi al khasmaini, tariq al sulhi wa al adili al munasibi likuli kaviyatin tariqan ila hal al mushkilati wa munazaat. And whenever there is, uh, whenever the affair is, is, uh, is unclear, or the, 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 the people are disputing, the two parties, they're, they're equal in their path, then uh, there is a, uh, a clear path that has been made to bring justice and to rectify the situation and it is suitable for every circumstance and situation. And the, 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 the legislation has, has placed a path any for solving these problems and, and solving these disputes. Anytime there is a, uh, there's a problem or, or, or there is an issue or there is a, a, a dispute, the, then there is a legislative way and a path to determine that and to solve that and to rectify that and to bring justice uh, and, uh, and peace yani, into this into this quarrel and dispute. فَكُلُّ طَرِيقٍ لَا ظُلْمَ فِيهِ وَلَا يُدْخِرُ الْعِبَادِ فِي مَعْسِيَةِ اللَّهِ وَهُوْ نَافِعٌ لَهُمْ فَقَدْ حَثَّ عَلَيْهِ إِذَا كَانَ وَسِيلَةٍ إِلَى فَاسْلُ خُصُومَاتِ 
وَخَطْعِ الْمُشَاجَرَاتِ So every path, every means, every way that does not have any oppression in it and will not cause the people to fall into sin or, or disobedience, the disobedience of Allah, and at the same time this particular way is beneficial, then uh, the legislation has encouraged to establish that. Then the legislation has encouraged to establish this means in order to solve and to, deter and to determine and, and to finish the, the disputes and to cut off the arguments and quarreling. And to cut off the arguments and quarreling, meaning it's not specific to any one way. All of the, the ways and the means that are allowed and that are permissible and that will not cause a person to fall into sin if he followed that way, all of these means could be used. All of these means yani, could, could be used to establish the proof uh, against somebody. We could say, for example, in these days they have fingerprints. They have fingerprints. This would not cause somebody to fall into sin by, by, by learning this affair. This is not an action of disobedience and it's a beneficial way to determine rights. And the likes like this. Was somebody here or was he not? Is his prince on there or not? Somebody said and he, that, that, that this gun belonged to so-and-so, that he killed so-and-so, and this is his gun. He says, it's not my gun. i never seen that gun in my life. And then you put it in his butt. It's got your fingerprints on it, though. Like, like this. Now, there's a karina. There's a evidence that, 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 that he's not telling the truth. How did, if you've never seen it in your life, but your fingerprints is on it. And the likes like this. So, so the, the point is the Sheikh is mentioning that every beneficial means and way Every beneficial means and way that is not, a considered, that is not considered sin or contrary to the legislation and the likes like this and it's beneficial means to establish this affair, then uh, it, it, the, the legislation has encouraged that and allowed that. Again, this is something that goes back to the order and it's not something that's set. And this is an indication again that the legislation is from Allah Azza wa Jal and it has been legislated in a manner that encompasses all times and all places. That is good and correct and a means to rectify every situation and every time and every place. Not just in one era and not just in one land. But it's suitable and sufficient and proper for every time and every land. And every time and every land. Because it's the final revelation and, and the sealed and complete legislation. And there's no prophet after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this deen and this law is perfect and complete. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي وراديت لكم من إسلام دينا. الله أكبر. So the Shaykh says, وَسَاوَى فِي هَذَا بَيْنَ الْقَوِّ وَالْضَعِيفِ وَالْرَئِيسِ وَالْمَرْؤُوسِ فِي جَمِيعِ الْحُقُوقِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made equal. He has made equal with, with regards to this affair between the one who is strong and the one who is weak and the one who is the, is the president or the leader and the one who is a civilian or a citizen and, and all of the rights, and all of the rights. And he's somebody because of his status in society or his rank or his lineage, he will not have a greater right than somebody in these affairs. And he will not, and he, these if he, if he stole, he will be dealt with the same. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he swore by Allah that if Fatima, she stole, he would, she would cut her hand. Radiallahu anha. Radiallahu anha. There's no, oh, this, oh, this, 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 this person here is, is high in the society, so we won't cut his hand if he, if he got caught stealing, for example. Or this person is the son of the, of, of the ruler and the likes like this. So if he murders somebody, we're not going to establish the, the limit. And the la they're all the same. Whether he's the ruler or whether he's the ruled, whether he's rich or whether he's poor, whether he's strong or whether he's weak, these the, the the judgments and the rules and the rights they're established, and they're, they're accordingly and they're all the same. Alhamdulillah. He said, "Wa arda al khusuma bi suluk yatuluk al adli wa adim al hayf." And uh, the the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has pleased the opponent and the one who is any claiming and disputing by uh, taking the the beneficial. And the just, the just paths, the, ju the, the paths of justice and without, uh, without oppression, without oppression. And he, because, for example, somebody is upset, he's claiming something. He's claiming something against somebody. But he has absolutely no proof, just his mouth. What can you expect from that person to do? Except swear, wallahi, it's not, I don't, wallahi, I don't have it. He's, you, you have my money. You owe me this much money. He said, I swear by Allah. So what's the evidence? What's the proof? He has, he, I don't have no proof. So now what do you expect the person to do? What can he do? <laughs> Wallahi, I don't, I don't owe you anything. Wallahi, I don't have your money. Wallahi, this is not your phone. Like, like that. There's nothing else at this time. So now this is the most just way. And you claim that against him, then, he, then if he's ready to swear before Allah, if he's bold enough and, and honest enough and true to swear before Allah, then alhamdulillah, what can you say against him? At this time, the swear, the oath will be accepted likewise, and they will not go further. And will not go further. Alhamdulillah. So it will be, it will be, it will be ceased. So this is also from the beauty of Al-Islam. Al-Mithar al-Sadi 
the 16th example. The Shaykh he mentioned, Rahimahullah, ma ja'at bihi sharia min al amri bi shura wa thana'i ala al mu'minina bi anna jami'a amurihim ad diniya wa dunyawiya, ad dakhiliya wa kharijiya shura baynahum. The 16th, the 16th example was that which the legislation has come with regards to the affair of consultation. This is likewise a beautiful affair, as he mentioned, uh, Rahimahullah, the affair of consultation and the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised the believers for the fact that in, in all of their affairs, in their religious affairs and in their worldly affairs and in their internal affairs and in their foreign affairs, and the likes like this, in every circumstance, the, the way they deal with these affairs is mutual consultation. Is mutual consultation. What is he referring to here? Huh? What is he referring to here? In Surah Al-Shura, towards the end of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, almost one whole page, is mentioning some beautiful traits. Beautiful traits of the believers. What is he referring to here? Beautiful traits of the believers uh, uh, that Allah has mentioned that they avoid and stay away from the major crimes and the sins uh, and the actions of indecency and that whenever they become angry they pardon and forgive the people and that they're the people who respond to the call of Allah and they're responding to him with obedience subhanahu wa ta'ala and they establish their prayer wa amruhum shura baynahum and this is the shayad and their affair uh, amongst them is that they they hold they dispose of their affairs by having mutual consultation Mutual, mutual consultation. They, 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 they consult one another in their religious affairs and likewise, likewise in, in, in their worldly affairs. Likewise, the, uh, Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal, He praised the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the same manner and mentioned, uh, uh, rather ordering him to take his companions uh, as consultants and the like like this. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضْضًا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَعَفُ عَنْهُمْ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He mentioned if it was not from the mercy of Allah Then you had, would have been harsh and hard hearted to them They would have fled from you They would have fled from you and had, but, but, the, but it was from the mercy of Allah That the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa He was gentle and he was kind So they didn't flee But had he been harsh hearted than the likes like this They would have fled from around him so the so so the so the so the Allah Azza wa Jal He said, "Fa'fu anhum wa staghfir lahum wa shawirhum fil amr." So pardon them, overlook their faults, and seek Allah's forgiveness for them, and consult with them in the affairs, and consult with them in the affairs. And then, whenever you make a determine, uh, you you determine, you take a decision that is final, and then put your trust and reliance upon Allah. Then put your trust and reliance upon Allah. So this is uh, no doubt a beautiful way, uh, a shura having consultation and getting advice. And uh, the people of Nala, as they mention, uh, the one who seeks consultation and gets advice from his brothers, he will never be, uh, he, 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 will never, uh, he, he will never be upset or he will never yani, fail. He will never fail or, or feel bad or feel like he did something wrong. If he sought the, the, the sincere advice and sought consultation, but something that should be known here is that not everyone is uh, qualified for consultation. Not everyone is qualified for consultation and not everyone is qualified to ask them for advice. To ask them for advice. And many times the calamities that we find in our society, in our communities, in our households, and between husbands and wives is because an individual who asked the wrong person for advice. Because an individual who asked the wrong person for advice. They'll ask a person that, uh, that will give them advice that is contrary to the legislation. We see this many times in disputes, in disputes between men and wife, uh, between, between a man and his wife. One of the sisters, she will have a dispute with her husband, and then she will go ask one of, some of the sisters who, 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 who are not trustworthy or reliable, or, or known to have knowledge or wisdom in the legislation and the likes like this, and they'll give advice that is foul, whether they'll give advice of hypocrisy and disbelief. They'll, they'll say, oh, your husband is doing this and doing that. Oh, if you call this certain lawyer and that certain lawyer, you can take him to court. One of them will say, she did it and she got this much money. If you do this and you do that. But uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned about going to these courts, that these are the tawaqid. 
that these are the false judge. And this is from shirk and from disbelief. And this is from hypocrisy. This is from hypocrisy to go to the false judges that are contrary to the legislation. And it, it could become even more severe and even more worse. For example, if a woman she's trying to establish uh, against her husband a divorce and claiming that he committed fornication. And knowing in the legislation of Allah Azza wa Jal, the obligation for the one who claims fornication against somebody is that they have to bring four witnesses. Four witnesses who witness that affair go down in any precise manner. They witness that they saw that. Four of them. If not, then they made that claim, they will be lashed. And they will be considered liars. And they will be considered liars. So if they, if they go to the Muslims to try to establish this, they will never be able to establish that against their husband. They will never be able to establish that against them. But if they go to the, to, to, to the disbelieving course, they can establish that. So this is a dangerous affair. This is a dangerous affair. أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى لَذِينَ يَزْعُمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ عَامَنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبَلِكَ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُوا إِلَى طَاغُوتِ وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ وَنْ يُضِلُّهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا This is something of the way of the hypocrites Allah he mentioned in Surah An-Nisa. The way of the hypocrites is that they, they turn away from Allah in His book and they turn away from the Messenger in His Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they want to take their judgments and disputes to the false judge. They want to take their disputes and their crueling and their problems to the false judges to rule for them. يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُوا إِلَى الطَّاغُوتِ 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 يعني this is a, a foul word. الطاغوت يعني that Allah He described these false judges these judges who rule with other than the rule of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as being طاغوت as being طاغوت also from the means of the, 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 the word the meanings of طاغوت shaytan is called طاغوت shaytan is called طاغوت and he, so the kufr is called ta'ud. Like this, this is a very foul way. With a, a very with a qila lahum ta'ala ila ila Allahi wa la rasuli. Ra'it al munafiqina yasuduna anka sadooda. The verses continue even more severe. If you see them called to Allah and called to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you see the hypocrites running away from you and fleeing and turning away from you. So this is a dangerous affair. This is a dangerous affair. The point is now that going back to this issue that many times. Uh, a person will find himself in a great calamity, in a foul situation, in a bad way because they have taken advice from the wrong person. Because they have taken advice from the wrong person. This is, this, this is very important. Getting advice. The, the way of the believers is that they, consultate, they have consultation with one another. They get advice from one another in their affairs, but they, they get advice from the people who are qualified to give advice. The people who, who are known for, for, for a good way, a good path, for good manners, for a good deen, for good creed, good methodology. It doesn't have to be a scholar, but he has to be somebody who knows the issue. And also he's known for righteousness. He's known for having a good tongue. He's, he's known for having good manners. He's not known for, for foulness and for wickedness. And the likes like this, many times a person, he will be misled and lost because of getting advice from the wrong people. Because of getting advice from the wrong people and it will cause much, much more problems, any way greater problems than, than is necessary by going to the wrong people and getting the wrong advice, and getting the wrong advice. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned in a, a narration, man uftiya bi ghayri ilmin fa ithmuhu ala man aftahu, wa man ashara ila akhihi bi amrin ya'rifu anna rushda fi ghayrihi faqad khanahu. That whoever gets a fatwa from somebody without knowledge, then the sin is upon the one who gave him the fatwa. And whoever leads his brother to something, he knows himself that right guidance is contrary to that, then he has betrayed him. Then he has betrayed him. But the point is, likewise here, is that a person should not be a fool and go to the wrong people seeking advice. A person, he should not be a fool and go to the wrong person seeking advice. Many times a person, they know if they go to the, to the right person or the person who's qualified to get advice, they will not get the advice that they're looking for. But if they go to this other person who and he has, has whims and desires, like they're leaning towards, they can give the advice that they're looking for. So again, this goes back to fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the point is that the beauty of Al-Islam is that, that, is that the believers, they consult one another. And they get advice from one another. And, 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 the, and the one who gets advice from his brother, he will never, uh, he, he will never any worry or grief because of that or be upset because of that. Rather, it will only increase him in clarity and in firmness of the path that he's going to take or he will see now a better path than that which he had. Either he's going to get advice 
And then that vice that he gets is going to make him firmer and more steadfast and more certain about what he's going to embark upon, or it's going to make him think twice, possibly there's a better way, or advise him of, oh, he's going to now see more avenues and the likes like this, and he'll have a better understanding of the situation. And maybe he'll have a better choice to make, and the likes like this. Another important affair to mention with regards to the issue of ashura, and getting consultation and getting advice, and the likes like this is that some people uh, again, it goes back to not being sincere. And someone thinks, some people, because of insincerity and because uh, of arrogance, that if you don't take their advice, then uh, you have disrespected them, or, the, or you don't like them, or you're, you think their advice is no good. And the likes like this, just because somebody comes and gets consultation and gets the advice from somebody, it doesn't mean that the advice is binding, and that in reality, in the end, that that advice is the best situation to take. Whether a believer, he will consult, and he will get advice from this person and that person, and then he will look at it. This is what, and this is what the Prophet, the prophet was commanded himself. Seek pardon for them, seek forgiveness for them, ask Allah to forgive them, and seek consultation with them, and then whenever you make a decision, put your trust upon Allah. So therefore a believer, he will take consultation and he will get advice from his brothers upon a particular situation and he will weigh his circumstances out and then he will make a decision and he'll put his trust upon Allah. Whether he took that advice or didn't take that advice, there's, there's no disrespect there. It's not, if he didn't take the advice of this one and he took the advice of that one, it's not because he didn't like this one or he thought this advice was bad. Like he came to him in the first place to get advice. Obviously he respects his opinion. But some people, they have a bad understanding about this and this is called falling out. And this is a problem. And this comes from arrogance. Oh, he don't like my opinion? Oh, he don't, he don't like my position? My advice is no good? Oh, he never takes my advice. All this is comes from having problem in the heart. Having problem in the heart. Having animosity or having, having, having hesed or having uh, any, so, 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 some impurities in the heart. And the likes like that. The one who is pure, he's, if somebody asks him for advice, he'll give him the sincere advice that he knows for the sake of Allah. And then uh, after that, it's in his hand. Because maybe what you see and the advice that you see is according to what you know. But maybe he knows other affairs likewise. So therefore he chose based upon this knowledge. So maybe he benefited from the advice and maybe the advice is good, but it shouldn't be handled and taken at this moment. So just because he didn't take the advice doesn't mean the advice is not good. Maybe the person gave beautiful advice. Maybe he gave beautiful advice, but in this particular situation, there's better advice. There's, a better, there's better advice. So he's not saying that it's bad. And the likes like this were denying it or belittling that person, but rather, any a person, he will ask for the advice and he will weigh up his circumstances and he will make consultation with his brothers and he will decide a, a decision and he will go for the sake of Allah. He will go for the sake of Allah. We understand that point. Many times we, feel, we see this issue. We see it in, in households and, and between friends and brothers and the likes like this. And, and, and it doesn't have to be like that if the people would just be sincere. He just give the advice that you know and if he accepts it, if he uses it, alhamdulillah, if not, and if you gave this for the sake of Allah, then you're, 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 once you give the advice, it's finished now. You were asked for advice, and then you give the advice. Now you have no hand in that at all. Khalas, alhamdulillah. If they take it, they take it. If they don't take it, they don't take it. Alhamdulillah. And this is very important. I need to emphasize the likes of these affairs, especially in our society today. This is, the religion is based upon that, as we have seen. This is also from the beauty of Al-Islam, to avoid disputes to end the disputes, to, to bring unity to the hearts, whether from the greatest foundations and the greatest beauty of Islam is that it orders unification upon the truth and upon the way of the companions. That, that it orders us and, and it forbids anything that leads to dissension in the ranks. Dissension in the ranks. That's why one innovation has been prohibited and sinning has been prohibited. All that they need to, to unite upon the Quran and the Sunnah, to unite upon the understanding of the, of the companions. These uh, transactions have been uh, made uh, impermissible, many of them for that reason, because they lead to dissension in the ranks. So this is a, a, a beautiful affair to, to learn how uh, to be united for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of one's personal benefit. So the Shaykh says, وَهَذَا الْأَصْلُ الْكَبِيرُ قَدْ أَجْمَعَ لُقَلَاءُ عَلَى اسْتِحْسَانِهِ وَلَأَنَّهُ هُوَ السَّبَبُ الْوَحِيدِ فِي سُلُوكِ يَصْلَحِ الْأَحْوَالِ وَأَحْسَنِ الْوَسَائِلِ لِحُصُولِ الْمَقَاسِلِ وَإِصَابَةِ الصواب. So uh, the Shaykh, he says that this great fundamental, this great principle here, the intelligent, the, 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 the people of sound minds and intelligence, they have all uh, agreed in consensus that this is something good. 
that this is something good to consult with the people, to get advice from those who know and those who are qualified to speak about certain issues. And if that, that everyone who has a sound mind knows that this is beneficial. Because if you have a sound mind and you go ask somebody else who has a sound mind, and if you have knowledge and understanding, and you ask somebody else who has knowledge and understanding, so that's knowledge to knowledge. Let's light up one light. So what's better, one light or two lights? One great mind or two great minds? Huh? Then you get a third great mind. And which one is better? Two or three great wise minds on a particular issue. So the, the, therefore the sound minds, the, he's, they all agree that this is beautiful to get consultation and to get advice. Many times a person will do something, he didn't get advice, and in the end he will say, <laughs> if I had only got advice, like, 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 like this, and he, he, will, he will regret, he will regret because he will fall into a, a situation that could have been better, that could have been better if he asked, he asked for advice, if he asked for advice. So this is what the Sheikh is saying, that the people of intelligence, they realize this affair and they understand that this is something good. And uh, that this is the, the one uh, reason uh, to uh, that this is the one means in order to traverse the most upright uh, the most upright and good uh, circumstances and situations and the best means to achieve uh, the goals and to achieve the truth and that which is correct and also to be upon the paths of justice and by getting advice and getting direction from the people who are qualified in this manner a person he can go straight he can go straight he'll be a means to help him hit the mark it'll be a means to help him stay away from oppression it'll be a means to help him stay away uh, from falling into deficiency or anything that is not praiseworthy and the likes like this by getting advice and getting consultation from the people who are qualified so then he says so this is yani, from the, the greatest means for the nations yani, to raise and to advance. The nations will apply the likes of this affair in order to achieve, to achieve every good and every means of rectification. And every time the people, they increase in, in understanding one another and, and the likes and their minds, uh, their minds become vaster and, and uh, more encompassing. They know the great need for the likes of this affair and this and its level or and its yani, uh, its uh, its benefit, its benefit and its status. Again, clarifying the the need of this affair, and the more one reflects upon it, he will realize the value of that, the value of uh, of consultating with his brothers, consult consultating with the people who are qualified to con to consult with. Again, yani, to emphasize that those who are consulted with, they should be those people who are qualified not according to whims or desires, but rather those who are qualified to speak about those affairs and they're known for a good way. They're known for good manners. They're, they're known for a good deen, for, for a good path, and the likes like this. And, and then uh, likewise, they're known to have knowledge of that affair likewise. Likewise, for example, maybe somebody is righteous, but he has no knowledge about business whatsoever. So if you ask him about uh, advice and consultation and these affairs, maybe he has no been, he, he, he has, Yani, the only thing he can tell you is fear Allah and do not fall into interest or do anything that's contrary, which is beautiful advice likewise. But yani, maybe he needs somebody who would give him more detailed advice, somebody who has experience in the, in the, in the particular field and the likes like this. And he, so this is something that one he will look for, the people who are qualified. So he said, uh, that whenever the believers, the Muslims, uh, they apply this foundation in the beginning of Al-Islam, in the beginning of Al-Islam, in their religious and worldly affairs, then at this time their, uh, their affairs, they were all upright. It's mentioned that uh, Umar, I know he would gather the people. He had, a, he had a board of shura. He would gather the people and he would ask, he would ask them advice, and, he, and if there were affairs that would occur, he would ask them even before that. Likewise, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he wouldn't make moves. They, they would get together and they would consult each other with regards to uh, collecting the Quran, with regards to uh, writing the narrations, and the likes like this. They would have consultations. One of them, they would have an idea, and they would deem it to be beneficial, and the likes like this, but then they would consult. They wouldn't move on that. Rather, they would ask others. They would ask Omar. They would, they would, they would bring in others, even they would bring Ibn, Ibn Abbas. 
in the, in the shura and the likes like this, even though he's younger, but because of his knowledge and because of his rank and status with regards to the religion and the likes like this, he wasn't considered from that affair with Umar. And the point is that the Shaykh is saying this is from the reason why the, the believers in the early days, they had great success because they applied the likes of these principles. They applied the likes of these principles. He said, فَلَمَّنْ حَرَفُوا وَنْ هَذَا الْأَصْلِ مَا زَالُوا فِي انْحِطَاطٍ فِي انْحِطَاطٍ فِي دِينِهِمْ وَدُنْيَاهُمْ حَتَّى وَصَلَتْ بِهِمْ الْحَالِ إِلَى مَا تَرَى فَلَوْ رَاجِعُوا دِينَهُمْ فِي هَذَا الْأَصْلِ وَغَيْدِهِ لَأَفْلَعُوا وَنَجَحُوا He said, but whenever the Muslims, they deviated from this principle, then uh, now you find them continually following, uh, continue following, fa- falling, yani falling back, and the light sight is falling back in their religion and in their worldly affair until it has reached them until the circumstance has reached with them into the situation that you see today the sheikh he died in 1376 1376 when was that how many years ago it's 1443 1376 huh? about approximately 70 years ago and until you see the situation what you see today any of, of the believers any of the muslims the circumstance of the believers any of the sad situation how huh? They're fighting one another and they are selling their religion for their worldly affair and they have no concern for the sunnah of their Prophet وسلم, yani in, in general, many, many of the believers are in this manner. And he's showing great love for innovations and, and no concern for the sunnah Wallahu Mustan. And, and you have reached this affair by not taking consultation and, and, and the rest of the, uh, the affairs that have proceeded likewise. He said if they had just uh, returned back to their religion, and the likes of this principle, and other than that, they would be successful and they would win. They would be successful and they, and they will win. The Shaykh, he said, Al-Mithar al-Sabi'ah Ashar, the 17th example. Anna hadihi shariyata jaat bi islah al-dini wa islah al-dunya wal jam'i bayna maslahat al-ruhi wal jasid. From the beautiful affairs of this religion is the 17th example that the author, he mentioned, Rahimahullah, that this legislation has come with the means of rectification for their religion and likewise rectification for their worldly affairs. It didn't focus on one and, love and leave off the other. Rather, it's a, complete, it's, a, it's a complete and absolute religion encompassing the whole life of the human being from the beginning to the end. From the beginning to the end, every, every aspect of the life of the human being. Every aspect of the life of the human being. His body and his soul. It has, ga- it has gathered between uh, the rectification and that which is most beneficial for his soul and likewise for the body. For the soul and for the body. And this fundamental principle in the book and in the sunnah, there are many evidences for this. And the mention of this is a lot or in abundance. And Allah and His Messenger, وسلم, they have established encouraging both affairs. They have established, uh, they have encouraged uh, establishing both affairs, meaning the deen and the dunya. And each one of these affairs in, in, in reality is a means to support the other and a means to aid the other. And that, that, that a person, uh, in order to establish the religion properly, one he must also establish the worldly affair properly. And, and this is how the da'wah spreads in that manner. And we look as an example in the life of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Rahimahullah ta'ala That he had knowledge he, he had great knowledge And also he had determination And, uh, and Allah knows best What is apparent from what, what came after him Is he had sincerity likewise And truthfulness With Allah Azza wa Jal But it wasn't, it, it wasn't until uh, he, he was coupled with, with Al-Imam Muhammad Saud Who had authority Who had money and, and authority At this time the da'wah was able to spread so whenever the knowledge is based upon the religion, coupled with authority and power, coupled with authority and power and strength, now the da'wah was spread. And, and after that, the da'wah spread through the lands, and they had authority through the lands, and they, and they removed shirk. They removed shirk. They, they removed shirk, yani, with, with, with knowledge and also with force. They removed the graves and wiped them out. And then they clarified that, and they removed that, that, that attachment in the hearts of those people until they became from the muwahideen. Yani with knowledge and with diligence and also with, with, with money and, and effort. And, like, and likewise we see that it's continuing in that same land today that the, 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 the government uh, of al Mamluk Arabiya Saudiya, they, they, they support the da'wah. They support the da'wah with, with millions, if not billions. And uh, they, they support the, da'wah, the da'wah, they support the scholars, they support the money. How many masahib do we have here in this masjid, in this land, in, in this country alone? 
that all of them they come free. And how many books, all of them they come free. The library is full of books that are free. And, and, and this masjid and many of the masjid and, he, and the likes like this and the information that reaches us and the knowledge that reaches us and the efforts that come from them uh, is in a major affair. So they have, the, the, the people of knowledge have financial support. They have financial support. And, and this is very beneficial. And this, in this manner, the da'wah can spread and the da'wah can move. And even people of knowledge, they're freed up entirely to teach all day long, every day. And for, and for the likes of this, we see the likes of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin. He would teach every single day except one day a week. <laughs> every single day, one, except one day a week, he took one day off for himself. Every, every, other than that, he's teaching six days a week. Six days a week for years like this, constant teaching. Yani, because he's freed up to do that. All day long, he'll prepare the class and he'll review the affairs. And then at nighttime, he will give the class like this. And likewise, his son. And likewise, uh, the, the, the scholars in this manner over there, they're supported, they're aided. The knowledge is supported and aided. They have universities that they build. So this is a beautiful affair to take a lesson from that. That the knowledge, it has to have knowledge. I mean, that the da'wah has to have knowledge. And also it has to have support, financial support for it to spread. They have to work together. There has to be authority and knowledge and authority with the hand and with the force. They have, they have to have authority, financial authority. And, 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 and authority, any to, to, to cover oneself and to take care of business. And he, for the sake of Allah, well, this is a beautiful affair. This is a beautiful affair. So the religion that came like this, with the rectification of the deen and the dunya. The deen and the dunya. And uh, this is something that is encouraged. So he says, Wallahu ta'ala khalaq al-khalqa li'ibadatihi wa al-qiyami bi-hukukihi wa adarra alayhim al-arzaq wa nawa'a lahum asbab al-rizqi wa turuk al-ma'isha liyasta'inu bi-thalika ala ibadatihi liyakuna so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has created the creation to worship Him And to establish His rights And He has provided for them with, uh, with great provision And tremendous uh, And He has given to them all different types of, of provision and blessings And uh, also He has opened up the ways for Him for, for the people many different and various ways of livelihood In order for, for them to use this as a means to establish His worship to establish his worship. Allah created us to worship him and he created this creation for us to use to help us worship him. So many people, they're preoccupied with the means and left off the purpose. They're preoccupied with the dunya, which is a means to worship Allah, and they left off the worship of Allah. It's completely backwards. Completely backwards. Allah created the creation for us to use and to benefit from in the worship of Allah. And even in doing that, we have pleasure and joy. We have pleasure and joy. And by using the dunya that He gives us and the pleasure of Allah. We have pleasure and joy. We can have a good time. We can have fun with our family and our wife in the obedience of Allah. Fulfilling our purpose in life. Laughing and eating and drinking. Even the celebration of, uh, of Eid is, is days of eating and drinking. That's worship. That's worship whenever it's performed properly. In the limits of Allah Azza wa Jalla according to this beautiful legislation. So th this creation was created for us to use as a means to worship Allah. And if we do that, we're the ones who benefit in this life and the hereafter. We can enjoy our life in this life in the, in the best manner and the limits of Allah. And then likewise in the hereafter as well. And that, that joy will continue. That joy will, will continue and last. And he is, so long as the one that was performed for lasts. And he meaning will last forever because Allah, he lasts forever. He does not have an ending. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that which is performed for him is eternal. And that which is, which is performed for other than him, it, it will be cut off and it will be lost. It will be cut off and it will be lost. So the, this, this creation is created for us to use it to worship Allah. And in order to establish uh, the, the affairs in the inwardly and outwardly, and their internal affairs and likewise their uh, external affairs or outside any, or their foreign affairs. So the Shaykh, he says, وَلَمْ يَأْمُرْ Even there's a clear mistake here. How many do you have? As a dama, as a dama, huh? Dama is clearly not supposed to be there, right? Uh -huh. That's why you have to learn. If you learn nahu, you're good. You don't have to worry about what they have there. وَلَمْ يَأْمُرْ بِتَغْذِيَةِ الرُّوحِ وَحْدَهَا وَحْمَالُ الْجَسِدِ So Allah, He did not order to cultivate the soul, to nourish the soul only, and to, uh, and, and to, and to show no concern for the body. كَمَا أَنَّهُ نَهَا عَنَّ الْإِشْتِغَارِ بِالَّذَّاتِ وَالشَّهَوَاتِ وَتَقْوِيتِ مَصَاحِحِ وَمَصَارِحِ الْقَلْبِ وَالْرُوحِ 
What do you have in yours? كما أنه نهى عن اشتغال باللذات والشهوات Do you have anything in the food? No? Over here I have Because Allah he didn't prohibit uh, the rectification of this, the heart and the soul, huh? كما أنه نهى عن اشتغال باللذات والشهوات وأمر بتقوية مصالح القلب والروح لعل هذا هو السواب هكذا ذكر المحقق هنا وأمر وأمر بتقوية مصالح القلب والروح ويتضح هذا في أصل آخر وهو هذا So the Shaykh he says uh, and uh, Allah he did not order to cultivate or nourish the soul alone with and, and to have no care for the body just as he prohibited on becoming preoccupied entirely with delights and, and desires and whims and he and he has he has ordered to strengthen the heart and and the soul Allah has ordered to strengthen and to strive to strengthen the heart and the soul and it becomes clear this principle becomes clear with the principle that with another principle and it is the one that is following and is the one that is following the point is that yani Islam has come with the rectification of the mind and the body and the soul the mind, the body, and the soul.